came in here, our goal, our goal was to break the South Carolina record, which was the East Coast Hockey League record, which was over averaging about 9,140 some odd fans per game. Get you going when you see 11,000 screaming fans doing the chomp every night. You know, I, I went to a boxing match and a hockey game broke out. Fans into McEwen. Fans does a couple of us. Here comes McEwen. Punch for punch. McEwen throwing less. McEwen firing, bench firing. This is a good one. And I don't think in any time before have I ever been involved in anything that intense or that exciting. Oh, the whole... Handy with a chance to win it all. Here he comes. Handy up the middle, over the blue line. Looking at Richards to the back end. He scores. He scores. The ice skaters win the South Division title. Louisiana ice skaters, hockey in Louisiana. Who would have thought it would have been such an unbelievable success story? My name is T.D. Smith and I'll be your host. And in the next few minutes, we'll look back at how it all began, how the ice skater story is really more fairy tale than it is typical sports story. We'll talk to the owners, the staff, and even some of the players and look back on this unbelievable season. But first, let's take a look at how it all began. Once upon a time in deep south Louisiana, there lived an alligator named Alphonse. But Alphonse wasn't very happy in Louisiana. Though he was able to find temporary relief in the cool swamp water, he hated the heat. While all his gator friends were enjoying those hot days sunning themselves on rocks and logs, Alphonse was in constant search of a nice shade tree or the cool deep waters of a crawfish basin. Every day, Alphonse would read of a wonderful place where it was always cool and where a fun-loving gator like himself could find plenty of ice to keep comfortable. This place was called Nova Scotia, but Alphonse could only dream of ever going there because it was so far away. Alphonse loved to read about Nova Scotia, and he even read of new ways to entertain himself through games on the ice. One of them was hockey. How he would love to glide across the smooth, clear ice with stick in hand, scoring goal after goal and then resting his belly on the cool ice after each game. Oh, the thought of hockey made him chomp with delight, but then he would realize that this could never happen in the hazy swamp he called home. One day, Alphonse read that some people were making ice in Lafayette for a hockey team. He couldn't believe that his dream was finally coming true. Alphonse didn't think twice. He packed his little bag and he headed for Lafayette. When he got there, he couldn't believe his eyes. He now had his own frozen swamp. But this made a lot of people jealous. It seems like some wanted a piece of his frozen paradise. So Alphonse called up all his gator friends to help him defend the swamp from invaders. And invaders there were. Blizzard kings, tiger sharks, and many more. But since the ice skaters joined him, there's no need to worry anymore. And Alphonse is now a very happy gator in his new home called Cajun Dome. circumstances brought my brother down to Charleston, South Carolina many, many years ago. He was a tennis professional in Canada. And then I ended up actually transferring within a big corporation, Xerox, uh, to North Carolina and then down to South Carolina. And while we were down there, a, an old friend of mine was a fellow named Frank Milne who had brought hockey to Charleston, South Carolina. And everybody at that time thought he was crazy because Charleston's a very uh, 
a traditional southern town, you know, very much a tourism town, and nobody thought hockey would really ever have a chance in a place like Charleston. But uh, lo and behold, uh, they averaged over 9,100 their first year uh, in a brand new facility over there. We uh, saw the opportunity and there were really, we just started looking at potential markets and uh, saw Lafayette, Louisiana as having a beautiful facility, the Cajun Dome, and then more and more we saw a desirable market over here. But the idea of a hockey team in South Louisiana didn't appeal to everyone. In fact, one of the major partners, Ernie Parker, was reluctant when approached with the idea. My first thought was that uh, it was kind of far-fetched. especially when they were talking about having a hockey team uh, this past season. I mean, the first time it was brought to my attention was in probably April of last year, the first part of April. So I didn't think it was a real possibility, but as things unraveled, every day brought on a new set of facts that uh, more and more I became impressed with. After a difficult search for willing investors, the Berryman's efforts proved fruitful. In March of 1995, it became official that Lafayette, Louisiana was to enter the East Coast Hockey League for the 1995-96 season. But although the Cajun Dome is a beautiful facility, it wasn't ready in any way to meet the demands of a professional hockey game. Major renovations had to be made to the building to house the Louisiana Ice Skaters. The entire floor of the Cajun Dome had to be torn up. Uh, all the concrete had to be removed and then the cooling coils <clears throat> were run underneath uh, where the concrete previously existed um, and they had to be all hooked together and it's, uh, as I recall, it's like eight miles of cooling coils that are intertwined underneath the floor and then all the concrete had to be re-poured and everything hooked up to the uh, compressor or cooling unit. They did it in a tremendous amount of time, I mean a short period of time and we were successful in uh, having it ready for the opening of the season. During the renovations, the Berrymans hired Doug Shedden, former Pittsburgh Penguins player, as head coach of the Ice Skaters. It was then up to Shedden, who had led the Wichita Thunder to two consecutive championships in the Central Hockey League to recruit players and get a team together. Uh, Doug had called me to, uh, during this past summer and told me, and said, you know, we're getting a team in Louisiana, and I, you know, I, so first thing I did was with my wife and uh, we went down, grabbed a map and saw where Louisiana was. We weren't really uh, sure where it was and um, we were excited, you know, I'd rather play hockey in a warmer climate, you know, uh, it gets so cold up, up north. Um, but we didn't know what to expect, they just uh, just come down and he said there are a great bunch of people around here with, uh, you know, party, parties and festivals every weekend or something else. So uh, it was a lot of fun but it was we weren't quite sure what to expect when we got down here. Well, I thought it was... Um I'm going to be going down to swamps and alligators and snakes and actually I wasn't really sure what to expect out of Louisiana. Uh, I had talked to Doug Shedden briefly in New Jersey when I was playing roller hockey up there in the summertime and he was kind of going through, made a stop to, to say hi and see what was going on. And, you know, he explained to me what the situation was. It was a great town and you know, the people were great, but, you know, coming down to Louisiana, you don't hear much about, about Louisiana up north. The most you hear about is New Orleans and during Mardi Gras. So a few months later, Doug Shedden had a team and the Cajun Dome was ready. The next challenge was to get the people of Lafayette in the building for a game they didn't know much about. We knew once we could get the people in the building once with what we had planned for our overall game production, that once they came once, we had them. And uh, it was just a question of getting, getting them in the building for that opening night. For a few weeks before the first home game, TV commercials were run on local stations, portraying hockey as a physical and fast game in order to sell tickets. I mean, the bottom line is you got to get fans in here. You had to get them in here. Before you could teach them to enjoy the game, you had to have something to draw them in. The fact that we won helped. But the people did like to see the fights. Uh, the start of the season was a bit like a fairy tale. We spent our first 30 days on the road. We spent our like first 10 or 11 games on the road, and uh, we kept hearing that our that our sales for our season ticket op opener were going up and up and up. And, and by the time we were rolling around the last two games of our road trip, we had heard it was sold out. So everybody was kind of excited to get home and see what this was going to be all about. You know, our first chance here, their first chance to see us. And we're, we'd been playing very well. We were like 7-3-1 or something like that coming back home. So we were excited. 
and uh, the fans were excited. I'm, I'm not sure they knew what to expect. We weren't sure really quite what to expect. By selling almost 2,000 season tickets before their first home game, the ice skaters set their first of many East Coast Hockey League records. And also on opening night, with a crowd of 11,026, the ice skaters set another East Coast Hockey League record. Let's see what happened on that night. Uh, everybody's adrenaline was just man. I, I couldn't I couldn't sleep the Saturday night before. I was just I was bouncing off the of walls. I was so excited. Um, but I tell everybody, if you want to know what a true adrenaline rush is, that very first game, I was the first person to hit the ice, and I went out there. Did not know what I was going to do, how I was going to enter. Um, I went running out there and just decided to slide at the last minute. And I said I'm going to slide to the center ice. And when I hit the center ice and the noise that was coming from the crowd, uh, it was just phenomenal. There, there's no way to describe it. I, you know, being the first one out there, the first one on the ice and just listening. And man, you, there, there's no way, no way to describe it. You, like I said, you want to know what an adrenaline rush was? That was it. I don't think I slept for three days after that. And as advertised, the fans were also treated with a couple of fights on opening night. McEwen firing, Vince firing. This is a good one. Still going out of punch for punch. McEwen's got the sweater over his head, gets it free. Now he's throwing rights. McEwen and Vince going punch for punch. Because it's not only in Lafayette. That that, that works everywhere. You know, uh, there's everybody in Canada and the Canadians know the game so well. And, you know, even Canada, people love to see a good ho hockey fight. And, uh, you know, not only see a good hockey game, but see one good fight a night or two good fights a night. And it, it's just part of the sport. And, uh, you know, not that we condone it or sell it. It's just part of the sport. And the sooner people get used to that, the better it is. Like, you know, we, we're not selling brawls. And, you know, that's certainly not what we're part of. You know, it's just it's a good way of two men getting their angers out instead of hitting each other with sticks. They, you know, they, they do it the old-fashioned way. Well, it's funny you say that because I've had a lot of people come up to me and say they think they're fake. And I'm like, no, they're not fake. I've got stitches here and stitches there to prove they're not fake. But uh, I think that was the initial draw to a lot of people to our hockey games was the fighting. It's, and it's a, and uh, the thing is about this league is there's more fighting and rough stuff in this league. And as you get to the higher leagues, the, the double A and the, and the, or the triple A and the, the NHL, uh, there's not as much. But uh, the, the initial draw, I think, for the first two or two or three months we had two or three fights a game and people were going nuts and they loved it but then as the year goes on and teams know our reputation and know that if they mess with one of us they're gonna have to mess with, with all of us and the fighting kind of slowed down but the, the people still still kept coming out and uh, they started to learn the game a bit and, and, uh, and they loved they, they've loved it and seemed to, to have adopted us um, and it's been great. You need pretty much a combination of both you need tough team you need goal scorers you need you need pretty much uh, a full team of guys who uh, know that what the role is supposed to be on the team, whether you're a banger or a scorer or a passer or a fighter. I mean, but uh, fighting's part of the game, and it's going to happen when uh, it's a game of emotions. And, uh, and when, you, when you fight, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's part of the game. Of all the fights the ice skaters got into, there is at least one the fans will never forget. It happened December the 3rd, 1995, and is now referred to as the Tallahassee Brawl. It was one of those things where you didn't really see it coming, that kind of a brawl coming. You thought that, well, yeah, Tallahassee's frustrated. You didn't really see the explosion about to happen. And then sure enough, you know, of all people, Rob Valasevic, the guy who scores 40 goals for us, is the one who gets hit and defends himself. And then Freddie Goltz got into it. And you knew the minute that their goaltender left the crease. Well, that's a rule in hockey where that's it. Fred Goltz with a couple of big right hands. Oh, Goltz is going crazy. Stacy up just totally. Now the goaltender Bell jumps in. This thing's breaking loose. Here comes Brian Schoen end to end. Everybody in the ice fighting. Brian Schoen going crazy, going after the goaltender. Barry beating a guy up. This thing is broken free, and the Gators are cleaning the house. 
Spoltor comes over. Five on five fight. Brian Schultz. It was just one of those things where everything happened so much at once that you just tried to describe it, but I don't think you could do justice to what was going on that night. As the season progressed, there were less fights and more hockey. The ice skaters were now fighting for the Southern Division title. The fans had improved their knowledge of the game, but were still having a good time. I don't think anybody could have predicted this. Uh, I, I thought, uh, once I met some people here, uh, that they would really like it. They're big football fans. They like the, the fast, aggressive sports. So I thought people would grow to like it once they learned, learned the game a little bit better. But uh, for it to come out right off, right off the bat and be so successful, uh, it was unbelievable. And it was great to play here because of that. Uh, it really gets you going when you see 11,000 screaming fans doing the chomp every night. Oh, it's wonderful. You know, they've got a lot of fans in the NHL, but a lot of them sit on their hands. Uh, they've got a unique uh, symbol every time we score. They've got the chomp going, and, and that's something that's unique only to the Cajun Dome and to the uh, Lafayette fans here. Well, it's kind of funny because... Uh, you know, at the start of the year, I felt like uh, my job was very safe. I could coach here for 10 years because nobody knows anything about hockey. But by the end of the year, I had people coming up and, and on the street or, or on radio shows telling me, why don't you do this, why don't you do that? So, you know, people did catch on fairly quickly and it was a surprise. It seemed like once they learned the rules, then, then the rest of it kind of took over for them. And, and it was kind of interesting. And it still is kind of interesting talking to people. And, and you know, they're, they're still a little bit off. They're not right there, but they're getting close. I think the fans, midway through the year, really start to catch on as their interest in the team grew, their interest in the game grew, and they really caught on to what was going on. Granted, they're not up there with the Montreal Forum fans just yet as to the nuances of the game, but for a first-year team and first-year fans, I feel they really got knowledgeable, and uh, you can tell they started to question things toward the end. You know, oh, what'd you do that for? Why'd we go with that lineup? And it started to be, you, see, you heard the second guessing, which means they felt comfortable what was going on, and they started to believe in it, and they knew what was happening out there. Towards the end of the season, it became obvious that the ice skaters were going to break yet another record overall and average attendance in the East Coast Hockey League. It happened the night before St. Patrick's Day. That night, the players were wearing a special occasion jersey, and at the end of the game, the fans received the first star for being the number one fans in the league. The players even gave them something special. They came back on the ice to salute their fans. We came in here, our goal, our goal was to break the South Carolina record, which was the East Coast Hockey League record, which was over averaging over about 9,140 some odd fans per game. That was our goal, and we're goal-driven people, and Dave was a very successful athlete, I was too, and we didn't want to give up good careers at America's Research Group to come down here for anything less than that. But that was, although that was our goal, I probably would have been happy if we had averaged a little over 7,000. You know, 9,700, like we did not just to break the East Coast Hockey League record, but to shatter it uh, was something that I guess I can't even imagine was going to happen. But uh, it did happen. A lot of people, and I'm going to say maybe 90% of the fans, have, when, when they first come up to you, say, you guys have just turned this whole city right around, and, and you've been great for the economy, and you've, you've you know, you've given us a, a winning team here and it, it really kind of gives you a, a big sense of pride inside because we don't realize we just come here to play hockey and we, and we come here to do our job it's a job to us and, and uh, they say that we've put this back in the community and this and, and it's a great sense of, uh, of pride for, for us to think that we've helped out Lafayette and, and none of the guys uh, I don't think half the guys want to go they want to stay here because of the people off the ice between the fan support and the town it has been beyond anyone's wildest expectations uh, nowhere could you think that hockey fans would be this good to a team at any level. Uh, the fans and the town have treated everyone involved in this organization like we're something special, and I don't think there is any way we can repay the people of Lafayette and this area, Acadiana, for what they have shown us. I mean, we can try, but I don't think there's any way any of us feel we could repay them. But they did give something back to the fans. An unbelievable end to an unbelievable season. With only three games left to play, the ice skaters were in first place in the South Division, one point ahead of the Tallahassee Tiger Sharks. And of course, who were the last three games against? The Tiger Sharks. One in Tallahassee and two here at the Cajun Dome. And of course, it all came down to the final game. 
Well, everybody's kind of nervous. You know, it, it was a big game for us. Um, the coach had told us, you know, going into last weekend, we were playing Tallahassee. Well, Tallahassee was in second, we were in first. And we needed to win two out of three. It didn't matter how. And going into the last game, we had to win. If we lost or lost in a shootout, we could have potentially ended up going from first to third in our own league. So it was funny, before the game, I was joking that since this is his for the division title, let's do away with the shootout and just go to overtime. Let's just do a sudden death overtime thing and settle it the way men are supposed to settle hockey games. So sure enough, it goes to a shootout. And I don't think in any time before have I ever been involved in anything that intense or that exciting. Aaron Bo picks up the puck at center ice. Here he comes. Goes to his right. Bo comes in. Takes the forehand. Shoots and scores! Aaron Bo! Top shelf, and in round two, it's one nothing ice skaters. Ingraham skates forward, picks up the puck. Ingraham over the blue line. Ingraham comes in, shoots and scores. Ingraham took his time, shot it up over Manilok. It's 1 1. We're they through round three. Here comes John Deport. Deport with the puck. Comes in on Richards, shoots, scores! The Port just flipped it over the shoulder, under the crossbar, it's 2-1 midway through the shootout, round four coming up. Trevor Job, he's gonna take his time, he skates slowly. Job right up the middle, comes in, shoots, scores! Beats Matalock, high to the blocker side, it is tied at two midway through round four, here we go. Schwartz comes in. Schwartz, left-handed shot, fakes the side shot, shoots, misses! The ice skaters come down to this! A goal, and they win the South Division. It's gotta be Ron Handy. Doug Shedden looking around the bench. Here he comes, the Wiley veteran, Ron Handy, with a chance to win the South Division title. Ron Handy with a chance to win it all. Here he comes. Handy up the middle, over the blue line. Looking at Richards, to the backhand. He scores! He scores! The ice skaters win the South Division title! Bedlam in the Cajun Dome. The Gators have gone from expansion to champions in just one year. I've been doing that move for about a century now and <laughs> you know it just came natural I think uh, the pressure was more on that goaltender he's younger he hasn't been in, in uh, situations like that and uh, you know I just went down and did that move and he opened his legs and that's where I put it just like a bunch of relief weight off my shoulder you know being the older guy on the team and the more experienced and uh, to end up in first and, and give the fans here the deserving first place in the Southern Division 69 games three periods of hockey and it comes down to the final shooter the final showdown of the last game of the year it was beyond it was when you write up an ending for a season this successful you were like okay let's get the last game down division title and we go to a shootout everyone i mean you throw that script out like come on you don't do that but it came down to that and when the ice skaters won i don't think i've ever seen that kind of a celebration except maybe when the rangers won the stanley cup a couple of years ago it is everyone told me in this town there has been nothing like it ever in lafayette the Ice Skaters clinched the South Division title by only two points and were to play the fifth place team, the Jacksonville Lizard Kings. Unfortunately, the Ice Skaters' dream season was to end in the first round to the Lizard Kings. But in the fifth and decisive game of the series, the Ice Skaters broke yet another record playoff game attendance with a sellout crowd of 11,042. Playoffs is, is really hard thing that uh it's so do or die, and especially in a three-game series. Uh, you know, four games it seems. I know it's only one game difference, but it seems like you have so much more time. Uh, when we fell down, uh, fell behind early in the series, I just, again, we felt that pressure to win, and we, I think we, we should have won. We had a better hockey team. I thought we all played them, but they seemed to get the balances, and again, maybe a few calls here and there, uh, a power play, or, um, you know, and they, and they come up big. I, I can't say, you know, I take my hats off and they played really well. Uh, I'm a little disappointed or a lot disappointed that we didn't go further. When you look at the final four right now, that you know, I, I feel that we should have been there. But, uh, you know, you learn less lessons in life and, uh, you know, we did have a lot of success as far as we did win the South Division in our first year. And uh, the bad is we lost to Jacksonville in the first round of the playoffs. But, uh, you know, that's something that uh, I will learn and hopefully we'll be a better team next year. 
And with each new season begins a new story. Some players stay and others leave. But the ice skaters have shown that every season can be an exciting season. The addition of the Baton Rouge Kingfish to the East Coast Hockey League brought a new twist to hockey in Louisiana. Here are some of the ice skaters' thoughts on hockey in Baton Rouge. I think it'll be good for the rivalry factor because the people of Lafayette have for so long wanted to do something against Baton Rouge and USL and LSU don't play. And this is going to be something which is really going to be special because there are going to be battle lines drawn which is going to be fun. Uh, it may hurt the ice skaters a little bit in the fact that some of the people that came over from Baton Rouge won't be coming over now. Uh, that might hurt a little bit, but I think from a rivalry standpoint, if you have to hype a game between Louisiana ice skaters and the Baton Rouge, whatever they're going to be, then there's something wrong. And I, I think for next year, uh, you know, obviously the repeat as the South Division winners again would be a goal. Uh, but, you know, also, also we're building to win the Rally Cup. And, you know, I don't think we're a whole lot of steps away this year. We were very close, I felt. So, you know, if we can put those right pieces together and build a team that's going to be, uh, you know, maybe more of a defensive team where, you know, we're going to win those 3 2 4 2 games every night, you know, and, and get some good goaltending this year. So, uh, you know, uh, we're just going to build a team that's going to have guys that are going to work hard and have a lot of character. I think you can expect a lot of the same thing. Doug's going to. Doug's, as long as Doug Shedden's coach here, he's going to have a winning team. There's no question about that. And if he doesn't have a winning team, he'll trade the whole team until he gets a winning team. So um, it'll be a lot of the same style. Shedd's is a, is, a, is a tough coach who likes to have one of the toughest teams in the league, and we definitely had that this year. Um, and he'll bring in the, the guys who want to win and who will win and go to the wall or go through a wall for him. And, and they're going to have, it's going to start out the same way. There's going to be lots of, of, uh, of fights and rough stuff. But then as the year goes on, it'll trail off. and, and um, and it will just get to prove that we can play the, play the game like we did towards the end of the year when we uh, knocked Tallahassee off in the last series to win the South Division champ Championship. And the fans have never been disappointed with entertainment and on-ice promotions either. Uh, there'll be uh, a lot more planning as to uh, on-ice promotions and what we can do to make them more fun than they were this year. They were good this year, but we want to get better at them next year and, and just provide entertainment so that fans just don't, you know, the concession people probably don't want to hear this, but that they don't want to leave their seat because they're going to be looking forward to what's going to be happening between periods. Uh, Could it mean that hockey will have a long life in Louisiana? Honestly, this is city-wise, people-wise, and hockey-wise, this is probably the best place I've played in my career so far. But uh, the people here are just, just taking to it like a wildfire, and I just think it's great, and uh, I think it's going to be down here for a really long time. I really believe that we're going to build a um, hockey tradition here that will carry on for a long, long period. We mm, will continue to bring uh, a quality team with uh, good entertainment for our family at affordable prices. And from everything I've seen, uh, I don't think it's going away. I think it's going to stay. Well, I hear they're putting more seats in this beautiful spot, so I, I think if we're, we're, we have a good product to put on the ice, a good team that's, that's uh, exciting to watch, that we probably will break the record again. I, you know, I know I'm starting to know the personality of these uh, partying people down here. I, I, I don't think there's any question about it. For the 1997-98 season, the ice skaters sold more than 8,000 season tickets and are breaking attendance records as predicted. Last season, they made it to the Kelly Cup Finals, but they're still awaiting the celebration like the one after winning the South Division. And as we know down here in Louisiana, it's only a matter of time. I'm T.D. Smith, wishing you, the ice skater fans, many more pleasurable years of ice skater hockey. Unbelievable, Bruce. I... <laughs> Just take it in.